Hello. <laughs> hey, Lori. How are you? Hi. I'm doing it's good wonderful. to see you. Good to see you too, Allison. This is my friend Lori. She is a life giver. And one of the reasons I love you is because I know you've been through great pain. But you continue to give life. You continue to lift people up. I'm one of those people that you do lift up on a regular basis. So welcome. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the fire. The fire. The pit. Is this the pit? Well, I don't like people to think of my, <laughs> you know, relationship with me as being <laughs> the pit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. The fire. Anyway, okay. Let's just dive in full force and we can back up if we need to. Sure. So let's start. Number one, you just said you've been out of touch with your parents for how many years? 20, 25. And they decided that they no longer, you're transgender. Right. They decided that that was not okay. Yeah, they and, and my, they, they and my brothers. They just cut ties. Yep. So all of your siblings, all of your parents, 20 years ago just said. 25, yeah. 25. They've never seen They've never me. seen you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Not yeah. awesome, they still have this picture of who you were 25 right. plus years ago because in their minds this was just a decision you just carelessly made yeah. and okay yeah. but according to you this was not something you carelessly made uh no this was something that's been <laughs> well i knew when i was little yeah you know five six seven years and old. this has been a very difficult walk and struggle it's not it's still not something that you take lightly at all no no it's not no i yet it was difficult growing up yeah uh, keeping it a secret and, yeah and almost killed myself yeah had the tree picked out and everything right and uh well but uh you know god god intervened go figure and you're still here and i'm still here yeah and you're making those cards that i love and you always bring them I'm glad you like the cards. Um, anyway, and things that are unhealthy <laughs> that I eat. Um, okay, you're in my Bible study. Yes. And, you know, there was a time when you were like, no, I'm probably not going to do that. And I'm like, yes, you are. You're going to sit at my table where all a bunch of weirdos in the eyes of the Lord get in here. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah. And that is true. No, it's very true. It's very it's, true. It, it's hard because, you know, um, it's walking a fine line, not wanting to kind of, you know, be the one to pull the pin and throw a grenade sure. into church and have everything Absolutely. blow up because... And I respect that. I don't expect that 100% of everybody, even at my own church, would be okay. Right. And um, it's and confusing. That, and, and it's confusing. They don't understand. Yeah. My experience is that they don't understand. Yeah. And, and how could they? And it's called an agenda, a transgender right. agenda. You're or, trying or, to or, make Or me. even worse, a lifestyle. Like it's a choice. Look, yeah. living at the beach is a lifestyle. Okay. Yes. Living in the mountains is a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, being transgender is not a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not easy. No. You're, you're, no. you're living, sadly, even in the church setting, which is where you should be welcomed. You have to live kind of on the outside. Yeah. And that's not okay to me. And no matter, really, the transgender part, honestly, Lori, in this, it, it's irrelevant to me. I mean, no, I know that. it's a difficult thing. I don't know what that's like. I don't have to deal with it. But I, what's not irrelevant is the pain that you've been through. And why would I, I'll tell you one thing. My dad is a pastor. He's been a pastor for 35 years thousand years i don't know he has his doctorate you know that he's read through the bible he reads his bible every day religiously but and so i often go to him and ask him questions just about how he views things what does the bible say about it after i've kind of done my own research and just see how i view things if we view things the same way and i he knows you you've met my dad yeah. and he i said you know Lori has been through so much pain and isolation and loneliness and or before I even said that, I said, what is your view, biblically speaking, on Lori, on her situation? Like, how should I view it? Should I welcome her into the community? And he's like, Allison. Yeah, where's the verses that say, cast her out and well, do not be, do not defile, do not touch the unclean? Yes. I've, I've been told that. Well, he yes. did not mention those. Oh, he, okay, This good, is what good, he good, said. Good, he good. said, Allison... Lori has already experienced a loneliness we could never fathom. He said, why would we not want to love her? Why would we not want to go directly to her? Why would we push her away? And that's why I say the transgender thing 
is irrelevant to me because you deserve love just like me. And if and that's what I've learned from the Lord Jesus. There have been very low points in my life, very low points in my within my own family. Sure. Those are the times when I need the Lord. Yeah. I mean, I need him all the time. But when you get him in the lonely, you learn how to pull him with you through all of it, through the good. So when he said that, it was like confirmation. Okay. Yeah. I'm not crazy. I mean, I am crazy. I, I, okay, I'll, settle I'll, down. No, we're on video. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be nice. <laughs> but I'm not. I believed you would be one of the mm-hmm. first ones if Jesus were to walk in here. He would ask you, how are you doing? Yeah. And let you know how loved you are. So that that's one of the reasons also, even though I say the transgender thing is irrelevant, it's not irrelevant because Christians, are they're, they want to be on board and I'm not saying they have to agree with everything no. at all. You don't have to understand it. No. But you, I do have a, a difficult time when people aren't even willing to have a conversation. That's tough for me. Yeah, the, uh, you know, the uh, everybody is welcome, you know, with the yeah. ca- caveat that you actually fit in the membership requirements right. of the club. Yes. That, that can be a little, little tricky. And, right. Uh, and when I know behind the scenes, like what, what's really in the lives of the people at church, I mean, they're human, but there's a lot of stuff that's not pretty, but yeah. you wear yours, yeah. obviously. You wear what, what they're seeing. They don't understand it. And so, you know, yeah. that's a little too much. Yeah. It's a little too much. Well, and they don't want to think about it or they, I don't know, maybe they think mm-hmm. it's cooties and it's contagious or something. Is it? Is I it contagious? As far as I know, it's not. No? Okay. No, I don't have anybody else in my family who... <laughs> As far as I know. Right, right. Like I decided a, to flip a switch, you know? Like it's a really popular... If And, and my kids, you know, and they're all different ages, but they know you, and they, um, they're they not thinking about deciding to be to change their gender. Yeah. Now, we have very honest conversations with them because I want them to understand. Today's environment, because, mm-hmm. you know... With teenagers, there's always those who just want to be different, Absolutely. just to be different. Absolutely. And I think, um, I mean, back when, um, you know, when I was struggling with everything, this wasn't a thing. Yeah. I mean, not going to high school in the 70s and transitioning in the early 90s, but that was this wasn't a thing. Right. It wasn't hip. It wasn't cool. No. It was weird. Yeah. It was strange. Yeah. And, uh, but nowadays, it's it's almost kind of not want to say cool, but it's not as um, I suppose kind of forbidden as it was. And so I think there's culture. probably going to be well, there's going to be a few who I heard this term it was awesome trans trenders who um, <laughs> like you know, I get it but though. but, but trans- yeah trenders. just it's nothing else in rebellion against their yes. parents or whatever. But, but come on, it I wouldn't mean, surprise they're going to figure out their life really quick. Yes. Though. When real life exactly. hits, and they go, well, maybe this isn't quite yeah. what they thought. It wasn't as much fun right. as they thought it was going to be. And people in your situation, the suicide, you mentioned you you were going to kill yourself. You yeah, I had the suicide. tree. I had the, the, you know, the road. And the statistics of people who have... 40% have attempted. Okay. And almost 50 have at least been attempted and or seriously considered. Yeah. So I follow that statistic. That is ripped my heart out. Yeah, Why? It's... Why are we so adamant about hating people? And there again, you don't have to... You don't choose to be suicidal. No. You know, this isn't a choice. No. It's, it's... And I'm not marching in a parade and screaming at people. I'm just... I just... I want a relationship with you because you're my friend. It's yeah. not... It's not about... I don't know. It's it's that's hard to explain. Yeah. So it it's it does it 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 does. It's hard for it, the people don't understand um, that it just you know it's like one of those things that'll just it just tears you apart. When yeah. You, you can't be who you are. And, right. And you're being you're putting on the show and you're being the performer twenty four seven of who you're supposed to be. Right. And what you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's and, my uh, thing. And it just, um, you know, it, it wears at you and wears at you and wears at you. And, yeah. uh, and, and you feel so, alone. And, yeah. And you're a you Christian. Are. This is a, so oh, this I, is kind I of grew a, up in a good Baptist home. <laughs> me and, too. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, me too. so uh, 
been, you know, I've had, I've had amazing pastors. I've had yeah. nationally known pastor who's still, you know, right like today. And, yeah. um, so it's, it, yeah, it's not like I, I'm churched. Right. And it's like, but even now, that, which was part of the whole problem. Even I was, now, I think that a lot of people would come to you and say, and come to me also and say, well, you're obviously ignoring, you know, in the beginning it says God made, made the male, male and female. female. Of course he did. I mean, of yeah. course he did. He did a lot of things. Well, right. Flowers are male and female. Yeah. The birds. Well, the and, and everything was perfect in the beginning. Everything right. was. And was. I believe that's how God intended it. But I also believe we live in a fallen world where nothing's perfect anymore. Well, I know. I um, common, common phrase is, but God doesn't make mistakes. And I go, that's true. Absolutely. He yeah. doesn't make mistakes. Right. But, um, you know, I have, I have, Clients, friends who have Parkinson's, yeah. they have dementia, yeah. they have Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, uh, well, children. People born with autism, yes. missing limbs. Yes. Um, is that a lifestyle? Is that a choice? Yeah. No one. And and is it the surgery that was wrong? You know, I, I also try to think how. Okay, your body is a temple, maybe because of the surgery. Is that? And then I think of the. 60% population of women in my church that are probably have boob jobs. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm not, okay. Well, they're enhancing the temple. Is that? <laughs> they're adding to the temple. <laughs> they're enhancing the temple. But I just, I have a, a, a difficult time. Listen, the things that I've done that are not according to how the the Lord God, God's it. perfect plan. Yes. God had Let a perfect plan at the beginning. And I have not fit into that. Well, no, because we blew it back in the garden. Yes, but I've blown it several times since well, then. I know that, but I didn't want to bring it up online. <laughs> but he's still, like, yeah. he says, okay, Allison, there you did it. Let's take two steps back. I'm right here, and let's walk together. Right. And that is something that I've heard you say that you want to do. You're not, this is, this is very real to you. You have, dis, you have sat with the Lord and cried and begged and asked, and what do I need to do? This is not something that you have not thought about. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Um, so. It, it's, um, it's, it's, just, and, and, and people, and where, you know, be it online or wherever, uh, people, because they don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. They start because it's so unusual and it makes them uncomfortable and they can't fathom it. They can't wrap their heads around mm -hmm. themselves. Kind of like, no, it's right. like, it's like your body parts equal who you are. Sure. And, um, and for, uh, you know, 99.7% of the mm -hmm. population. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you hit, you did the, you spun well, the, the wheel and all the cherries lined right. up and ding, ding, ding. And it's just like, oh, I mean, exactly. Perfect. I was talking to a, a physician the other day about this issue and he's like, Allison, there's just so much more to it. And I said, well, why, why don't we hear about that? And he was like, well, no one wants to talk about it. He said, and Christians really don't want to know. And my husband's a biochemist and he's, mentioned he wants you to get some testing done he's like i feel like she's got biological markers for this 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 which and I, i'm like why don't you talk to people about this and he said they don't want to hear it they really don't and and i sort of believe that but i believe that there are christians who do i do i think they're kind of in the woodwork and not wanting to step out because of the stigma it's like you asking me is the word transgender off limits in this video no, but I don't work at a church, you know. No. I mean, I I had a gal last night I was online with, and uh, uh, yeah, because I recently, you know, wrote about you know people. I was writing to the transgender community, yeah. and and honestly, that's your audience. You're not trying to. Your audience is the transgender community, and you have done. You sent me a letter last week or a couple days ago that was someone that was just like, "Thank you. This gives me hope." Yeah, she's in Australia. Why would we not want to give hope to people who are desperate for it? We do. Yeah.